Good morning, everyone. Time for Sunday school. Oh, Lord, and I it hurts to pray. In Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus, everlasting Father, King of glory, we want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in our lives. For the miracle of sleeping and waking up, we say thank you. For bringing us together today, we say thank you. Blessed be unto your name, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Abba, Father, King of glory, I ask, Lord, as I'm about to preach today, give me the boldness and grace to spread the gospel today in the mighty name of Jesus. I ask, Lord, may your spirit open the hearts of the listeners today to accept and receive the gospel today in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for answers prayer. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Welcome once again. Um, so, today, our topic today is something very known, um, less than 32 social media platforms. This whole conversation today. So, I believe we're going to have a good conversation today. So, um, our uh, memory verse is taken from Daniel 12, verse 4. Can I please have that on the screen? Read together. <clears throat> Daniel 12, verse 4. Okay. Can we read together, please? One, two, go. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the day. And knowledge shall increase. Can we read that again, please? Shut up the word and seal the book until the time. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. May the Lord bless this reading in our hearts in Jesus' name. Um, so, can I have someone read Colossians 4, verse 5 to 6? That's our Bible passage today. Colossians 4, verse 5 to 6. Outsiders, make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Thank you. So, we're told by Apostle Paul to walk in wisdom towards others. As Christians, we're supposed to have a certain lifestyle different from believers, from unbelievers. Make the most of our time. We are youth, we should always make the most of our time. Let's not misuse our time doing something irrelevant. And um, it says, let your speech always be seasoned with salt and grace. What does that even mean? There should be difference in the way a believer talks and the way an unbeliever talks. We can't cook most food without salt. We know the importance of salt in our food, so we should have that salt in our speech, in our words and our actions. Yeah. May the Lord bless us reading in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. So our lesson introduction. Hundreds of millions of people globally are becoming increasingly connected on social networking sites to take full advantage of instant opportunities to share information and gain global celebrity status that these sites provide. In this generation, rapid sharing and consumption of information is is the vogue as the world increasingly becomes a digital global village. Are these networking sites the next big mission field or an enormous waste of time? Should a Christian participate in social networking? Before we go on, I'm going to ask you guys. I mean, it might be obvious, but should a Christian participate in social networking? Someone, or should I call somebody? Does anyone want to answer? Amanda, <laughs> should a Christian participate in social networking and why? Your answer on why? Well, I don't, yes, I feel, but then there should be like certain things that shouldn't be done, but I don't think it's wrong. Okay, thank yeah. you. So, in my opinion, I believe so, because when the times that technology is everywhere, we can't do without social networking. But the issue is, what are you doing social networking? What exactly is the thing you're doing with your social media? What 
are you showing to others? And 1 Corinthians 10, verse 31 says, whatever we do, we should do it all to glorify God. We should do, if we're eating, drinking, whatever it may be that we're doing, should be to the glory of God, right? So, yeah, the answer to this question should be determined by whether we can honestly ask God to bless and use our actions for his own good purposes. Um, so, we're going to our first outline. And our first outline is social media platforms. I'm going to let you guys please list some of the social medias you know. This is something everyone knows, so I'm expecting a lot of answers. No one, no one can actually shy from this. So there you are. Millennials, all those ones. Uh -huh. Nobody can shy from it. So please, can I get answers, please? Can some of you mention some social medias I use? Twitter. Thank you. Instagram. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Favor. Social media platforms What's that you know. What <laughs> such? <laughs> Yes, thank you. Um, I need someone else. Over there, please. Um, I don't know your name, I'm so sorry. But in black, yes. Social media platforms, you know. Sorry. Thank you. I need Mr. Biola, Mr. Biola, sorry. Mr. Biola, please. Uh, Hallelujah. Uh, I know of WhatsApp, and uh, I don't know if these two are still in vogue. Uh, to go and ask me. Praise the Lord. I'm surprised no one mentioned this, and it is the fifth. When, when you look at the statistics of all the uh, social media platform, that one is ranked fifth in the whole world, and it's the biggest in China, and it's called WeChat. Thank you guys for your answer. So I'm just going to define social media platforms before we get into the various kinds. Social media platforms are web-based technologies that facilitate the sharing of ideas, thoughts, and information through the building of virtual networks and communities. Social media is an internet-based is internet-based and gives users quick electronic communication of content, i.e., user-generated content. Social media websites and applications are such that enables users to create and share content or to participate in social networking. Social networking service is an online platform which people use to build social networks or social relationships with other people who share similar personal business or career interests, activities, background, or real life connection. So you guys have mentioned a few, thank you very much. So I'm just going to mention some of them here. YouTube, we have Facebook, Instagram, Quora, TikTok, Facebook Messenger, Pinterest, Viber, Discord, Twitter, WhatsApp, LinkedIn, Google, Telegram, Skype, QQ. Does anyone use QQ? Does anyone know what QQ is? <laughs> I don't know either. Tumblr, Reddit, Snapchat, Zoom, you know. I personally use WhatsApp, Instagram, and Snapchat a lot, so, yeah. Okay, so we're going to go to the impact of social media platform. That's our second outline for today. What do you guys think? What are some of the advantages of social media? I'm going to ask people who haven't spoken in a while. Hmm. The question is, advantages of social media. What's the impact? What's, what do you think are the advantages of social media? 
Sister Chiwindu, please. As we all know, it can be used as a form of communication, like especially with loved ones that are not here. Like most of our parents are not with us here. So like social media helps you like communicate with them. Thank you. Thank you. What do you think some of the advantages of social media are? So unlike let us say thirty years before into the twentieth century, like before you can, like, it helps us to expand our reach, basically. Like the church, for example, we can be here and talk to one million people that we don't even know that we've never seen before. So it helps us expand our reach and network, basically. Thank you. So I'm going to stop there for now, because we're going to talk about a lot of things. So stages are propagation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The potential of social media can be harnessed, propagation. So yeah, God gave us the idea. God, those who created social media platforms, the idea is not just theirs, you get. So it's given by God. So we should use those platforms to share the gospel by all means necessary. Be it Facebook, WhatsApp, whatever it may be, it should be a tool, not only for communication, but for us. Okay, um, yeah, so our second one is corporate engagement, just like most of us said. Social media is an effective communication tool for corporations, entrepreneurs, profits and non-profits making organizations, charities, advocacy groups, political parties, government sectors, ETC. Building of relationships, family, friends and associates can easily connect and reconnect for meaningful relationship. Can I please get Proverbs 18, verse 24 on the screen, please? Proverbs 18, verse 24. A man who has friends must himself be friendly, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. So I've heard of several relationships being formed online. It's okay. I mean, we do see some bad ones, but even though, even though we still have great relationships that have been formed online. So yes, it's a great tool for creating relationships, yeah. Social media influencers. We can become a great influencer of God through social media. Souls can be won and <coughs> made disciples of Christ, though true as you follow, sorry. Souls can be won and made disciples of Christ through you as you showcase God and the kingdom virtues to the world so i'm going to pause here because we're familiar with the whole influencing thing that's what's in vogue i guess what exactly are you influencing i think i need about two persons to tell me how they showcase christ through their social media platform like what do you do that someone will say oh yes and i know this person is known for this every morning this 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 or are you coming to church every Sunday, you're praying, you're whatever, and then on social media, you're a different person entirely. We don't even know who you are over there. So I need like one or two to just quickly. Thank you. Um, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I am, so I'm going to talk on Charles' behalf, on Charles' behalf. So she does this stuff every, every morning, I think, on WhatsApp. Yeah. She posts his, um, she just pretty much, I don't know if it's a devotional, but like she just posts Bible pieces and mm -hmm. just stuff. So yeah, yeah. she. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're, we're we're supposed to emulate. We're supposed to, even though you might tag yourself, oh, I'm not a social media person. Once in a while, what do you post? Even though you don't post at all, but what do you post when you post? Do you get? Do you post? all the things of the world is your instagram filled with clubbing drinking videos and whatnot or do you share the gospel on your instagram do you share the gospel on facebook on twitter or whatsapp so yeah that should be one of our goals to influence for god 
that should be our interest. Global business opportunities. Products and services can be advertised or marketed in real time. It gives the opportunity to create a sales funnel whereby a new contact becomes potential serious customer. Yeah, that's all for the advantages we have today. And we're going to go to the disadvantages. I know we have a lot, so I'll need you guys to you know, tell me some of them before I go into what's here. So can I get, yeah, Joanna going. <laughs> So a disadvantage would be addiction. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Okay. <laughs> no problem. Should I ask one? Yeah, sure. Okay. So my question is, would you consider dating apps a social media platform? And oh. if yes, would networking be ideal for a believer? Huh. Okay. That's a very, very good question. Okay. So before I even say what's on my mind, I'm going to give one of the elders, Pastor Wado, please. Can you please answer that? Dating website. Yes. Of course, we know that dating website is for believers. Uh, that is, let's say... Sorry, I don't... <laughs> I will tell you, I don't have a Christian dating website. I don't know what you do there, but I'm talking about the one that I know that is out there. It, there has, that is the essence of this study this morning, for us to see other avenues for networking. We have mentioned a lot of social media platforms that we can use for networking, if, if you want to do networking. But dating app is not for networking. They wouldn't like that answer. <laughs> <laughs> but that's my mind, eh? Thank you, sir. Well, I might not be exactly correct. Um, I agree with what he said, but I also want to chip this in, that whichever media apps we're using, the, uh, what you call it now, the basis, the purpose of why you're getting into this thing, if it doesn't glorify God, I feel then it's wrong. Even if you're on a dating app, are you there for, like, I mean, we're there for a relationship quite right, but is it the Yamayama relationship, or are you looking for, excuse my language, but are you looking for something that's going to glorify God? I'm not exactly going to scrap it out. Um, I might be wrong, but it should all be to glorify God. Thank you. Okay. Can I? Say, okay, yeah, okay. sure. I just wanted to add to what Pastor Bodo said and mm -hmm. why I agree with him with the whole dating website thing. Um, for me, I don't think it's really um, God's standard mm -hmm. when it comes to dating website because you're kind of belittling what God can do in your life, number one. And it's like you're having a plan B for God. In case God does not speak to you who your partner is, then you would figure that person out online. So for me, it's makes it feel like you're putting, you're having a plan B, and God wants him to be the only source of our, um, you know, this thing. So that dating website particularly, like, you, then you start putting yourself out there, st try to, like, start, like, even lying or some things like that, just to make sure that you appease to be probably who you are not, even at the end of the day. So I think it defeats the fact that God is your only source, and then you're looking for plan B for yourself. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I just, like, I don't know if anybody knows about it, but I know some people do. There is a redeemed dating website. Yes. And then I don't know if it's for someone that just created it or if it's actually the redeemed body that created it. It's a church. The church. Redeemed, the parish. Oh, a redeemed parish. parish. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thanks for the clarification. Yeah. Thank you. Um... So in, this is just my own opinion. Um, I do not think dating websites are wrong. Only the ones that, are, that have other unbelievers in there. Mm -hmm. That's the one I believe that is wrong because their intentions are not pure. People lie on that website. 
And then the reason why I don't agree to shunning website or online is because my cousin actually got married or met the person she fell in love with on Facebook. And they were in a long distance relationship for about uh, two years. And now they are married almost, I would say six, seven years now. So like, just because you met someone online doesn't mean that you're not waiting on God. You could be posting Jesus stuff, you could be doing everything, you know, sharing the word of God, radiating Christ, and someone could see you online. And God could speak to that person that, okay, why not message the person? So what I'm just saying is that I don't think it's right to just discredit online as long as you know that your intention is pure. Mm -hmm. I think that's just the key thing. It doesn't, like, the website, the online is not safe, but as long as your intention is pure, God can, you can find your spouse anywhere. That's what I believe. That is obviously holy and, you know, is acceptable to God. So I just want to like clear, clarify that, that I don't think it's wrong for online website as long as <laughs> as long as the website is filled with believers and people that are trustworthy. Thank you so much. I think it starts by defining if you can help me, maybe at school I don't understand what it's in it's all about. What happens there? Can somebody just help us? So, into analyze it from. Actually, done. <laughs> I was going to ask. I said maybe I am old school. My understanding of dating app may be different from what you understand it to be now. What is dating one? What do you what do, do you aim to achieve from a dating? Up. Has, anyone, that would has anyone been on a dating app before? No, I mean, because I really don't know, because I've not been on one, so I don't know what <laughs> they actually do there. But okay. <laughs> so I'm actually not on dating app, just just to clarify. <laughs> but um, I'm not on dating app. But like, I believe what dating app is where people different, um, male and female, would post their pictures and share you know, their profile, this is what I do, and these are my preferences in human beings. Like, okay, if you're a male, this is what I like. Someone that is, you know, um, that has good morals, that loves to read, you know, those are the kind of things people put on dating app. Open-minded, so like, that's, so that when you're scrolling through, you're able to see that this is the, this is the kind of person, the person you are checking their profile wants. So I think that's what a dating app is. And also, want to say, I'm not agreeing to that kind of dating app. But I'm just saying that social media, like Instagram, Facebook, yeah. Twitter, like if you are, you can be able to find someone, um, even that God has sent through online. Just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Okay, Joanna. You know, I, I need to ask these things just to also be sure we are that because we have, we have taken Sunday schools here, Sunday school classes here, not once, not twice, on dating. What is dating? <laughs> Can you answer the question? What is dating? Based on what we have done here before now, what is dating? At what point do you start dating? Do you just get into an app and start dating? Well, from what I know, dating is the friendship aspect before cutting. The, the what? Dating is the friendship part of it before cutting the person. So when you date, we're just big friends, basically. And then when we cut, we know okay, we're in a relationship leading on to marriage. So we can achieve that by signing on to any dating app. Well, not any dating app. So which one now? They are Christian dating apps. Okay. I will rest my case there. <laughs> okay, thank you all for the... Um, 
Can I just, I mean, I'll come back to questions and contribution. Let me just go. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I, ju I just have a, sh a very short um, contribution. So, um, marriage, I'll just, I would just like to say marriage is a big thing. And because you, I understand the aspect Sister Anu is talking from, that people meet online and they get married and they are staying together for a while. But I want us to know that marriage can be like, it's a concealed thing. Even though they are married for 10 years, for 15 years, for 20 years, whatsoever things is happening in that home, it's not obvious to you. You will see them outside as a happy couple. I'm not trying, to, I'm not condemning that you cannot meet your spouse, your partner on the social media platform, that God cannot lead you to meet this person on Instagram. But from the aspect, I'm, because I've, I watch um, American movies sometimes, and I see the way sometimes when, this, when there are two people meeting on a dating app, you put in your profile, the other person puts in their profile, and then, I don't know, but the one I've watched on American movie, it gives you like a 98% of people that match your profile. And I don't think that is what God is expecting from us. It's like a matchmaking. It's, um, to me, dating app is not, even when, when she was, um, I think started, or whoever mentioned there, was, there is a redeemed dating app, I was like, I've never heard of that before. I don't think it's biblical. I don't think it's acceptable. If you are looking for a life partner, trust God. He says trust in the Lord with all your heart. When you are doing something else, then you are not trusting with all your heart. You are just trusting with part of your heart. God will always lead you to the right person, if only we are patient. But if we follow the ways of the world, we just miss it. Thank you. We just miss it. To answer Pastor Bodo's question, I know, I actually know a few people who go on dating apps to find friends. Like, they're not looking for a relationship, they're not looking for anything, they, they're just looking for, for, for friends. So, like, not necessarily, <laughs> not necessarily going on a dating app, because that's the name, not necessarily going on a dating app to find somebody you potentially want to marry, but you could also just go there to find friends. Thank you guys for the contribution. I'm so sorry, so I have to just rush, rush through all this. Does anyone? Okay. Okay. So I, I kind of agree with. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like it. We what I'm about to say will like take me to my question, but then I kind of I want to say I kind of there's a kind of balance point in what everyone is saying. You know when. Um, I think these things, what we want to do, irrespective of being believers or not believers, it depends on you, your perspective of what you want to do there. Like social media, like um, LinkedIn, a lot of people go there for a lot of things, but what do you want to go and do there? I think it stands from your personal, what you want. But on another note, there's this popular proverb, if you know, like if you can me translate it, I'll say it in Yoruba, they say, I just, um, meaning that mm -hmm. if you follow this wrong set of people, if you last them, you don't have your own past life, your own values. You can be, there's something that you um, put them straw and every wind of doctrine. What do you, if, we, if, yeah, if you want to see it, can you stand for your perspective? Mm -hmm. Can you stand or because everyone is doing it, you will fall into the same trap. If you are confident in yourself that, okay, I can stand. Job, in Job, is, is not what we're saying, but it is that if men say the casting down for me, there's you no, know, so you, you will go, go like, what do you want? So it's a question. What are the restrictions that we place as? Because I've seen a lot of people talking, falling in Colossians of recent. But then, what define the do's and don'ts? Because in Colossians, if you can just display chapter 2, verse 16, and 2, verse 23, so, no, it's, not 23. it's making us to understand that most of the things, most of the restrictions we place on ourselves as believers, they are mere, more of human traditions. What human values that don't really have, he said, he, yeah, he said it does not have sensual indulgence in them. What are the restrictions we are placing on ourselves? I, of course, so I think that these things are not generic. It depends on 
individual perspective of God. He said, whatever we do, we should do it for the glory of God. So if you can get lost, if they can, like pendulum bob, they can kick you anyhow, you should not try that kind of thing. But if you are confident that I know what, like on LinkedIn, on LinkedIn now, okay, sorry. I'll just stop. On LinkedIn, what's happening on LinkedIn? So what I'm trying to say is it depends on your perspective. Pastor was right. You are right. But then if, like, don't let me repeat myself. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Pastor <laughs> Richard. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My contribution is uh, just uh, like um, a throwback to the question you asked last Sunday. So all through the week, I was just reminiscing on the question. I felt in my spirit, man, it wasn't properly answered by me. So would you permit me to go back to last question, last Sunday's, um, is it allowed? I guess, yeah. Okay, just a brief. So you were saying, uh, we were talking about entrepreneur and intrapreneur. That was last Sunday, right? And Bishop asked a question that uh, some people, they will get into an organization and they will um, take away the workforce, now, some people will go to the church and take away the member. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Little did we know that the entrepreneur is enjoying the grace of the entrepreneur. The day the entrepreneur decides to move out from the entrepreneur, the entrepreneur will be alone. For example, in church here, do you think you are all gathered here because of Pastor John? No, Pastor John is enjoying the grace of somebody. And that person is the entrepreneur. Who is that person? Daddy Gio. Daddy Gio is enjoying the grace of somebody. Who is that person? Who? God Almighty. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, you asked me a question one day. I told you, Myself and my partner, we founded a business, whatever, and we were loading containers, anything from here. You now asked me, you said, um, what if we want to send something from Africa to Canada? What did I tell you? He said, I said we can help anybody ship anything from Canada to Africa. He now said, okay, what if we want to send something from Nigeria to Canada? I said, the only thing we can ship from Nigeria to Canada is good news. <laughs> you know why? Because, you see, if an entrepreneur decides to pull out from the entrepreneur and say you want to stand alone, there's nothing. You're on your own. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you think you can pray for somebody and the person will be healed and because of that you want to go and start your church, go and start. <laughs> By the time you begin to receive arrow from left and right, you discover that it's not easy to be an entra entrepreneur is taking more risk, right? Getting more blessings, mm -hmm. but the risk sometimes might be more than the blessing. Praise the Lord. So it's always blessed or more, more bless, blessful to be an entrepreneur because you are enjoying the grace. Above all, Jesus said, whoever that will come after me, let him do what? Become an entrepreneur, follow your, carry your cross, and follow. It is more blessed to be an entrepreneur. But if God gives you the grace to be an entrepreneur, go ahead. Praise the Lord. Thank you. I wanted to talk on the eating stuff, and I was going to say that the, we should rather, most times as Christians, they just tell us don't do this, and we don't get the why. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if we understand, it would help us to easily, willingly not do it, right? So I feel like the difference between dating apps and finding someone on general social media is that dating apps, it's just like you're submitting a resume for a job. You are desperate for it. And God does not want us to be desperate because with desperation, we'll be blinded from seeing what we're basically supposed to see. I feel like that's the main disadvantage of the dating app. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to go on now. So some of the disadvantages are uncontrolled consumptions of posts, pictures, videos, captions, etc. We see a lot of ungodly things. Even we see a lot of ungodly things online. 
things we want to see, things that are actually just in our faces. But um, yeah, we should, God will help us close our eyes anyway. We should learn to ignore them, ignore the ungodly things on social media. Treating the Bible as irrelevant or archaic relative to modern trends and technologies. Time will not permit me, Shabba, I would have asked the question, but let's go on. Spreading of heretical teachings and half-truths. We see these days, someone just come on Twitter and they were like, this, 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 this. People are arguing, no. It's an advantage. We see it every day, but would I say you should engage? No, I don't think so. You know your truths. You know our Bible is our reference. You should always use that as your reference. Don't engage in bans on what you know you believe in. The Bible tells you this and someone is coming to give you half truth. Please, let's ignore that. Playing down the God factor as social media influencer for sake of retaining followers from all walks of life. God should be in everything we do. In our social media life, God should be there. Self-isolation, avoiding physical meetings or interactions while using social media as a virtue substitute to engagement with society. And yes, we're supposed to communicate on social media, but that shouldn't be the only means of communication. We shouldn't limit ourselves to, oh, I'll just chat with you online on Facebook, this, and then ignore. Some people don't even know how to communicate again in person. You get always online and whatnot. So now, addiction to social media. Galatians 5 verse 1 says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Addition is bondage. Why should we be in that situation when God has set us free? We shouldn't be. The only thing we're even allowed to be addicted to is the gospel of Christ. There's no ending. There's no limitation. Um, attention deficiency syndrome. Inability to concentrate on a tax or program for a specific period of time without diverting to social media. Hmm. <laughs> Physical disconnection from um, close relatives, which also is relating to self-isolation. Let's keep our family and friends close. Technology should not be the only means of communication, like I said. Um, vanity metrics, relying on the response from others through likes and comments to your posts and judging your self-worth are important. This happens a lot. I know people that actually have issues with how many likes, they're obsessed with how many likes, how many comments, is my dress this way, is my dress that way. Why are we seeking validation from others? God, if God, if you know who you are, if you know who, God's, who God says you are, there's no need. There's no, I don't see any need in wanting to seek validation from others. Activities of scammers and firsters. Hmm. One day you're seeing Precious Ife as your Instagram. Next day you're seeing a white man. We're seeing different activities of fraud online. People, you're friends with somebody. The next day you don't even know who the person is because their account has been hacked. They're using 419, whatever, too. No, that is wrong. And as Christians, we shouldn't engage in such. Excessive love, self-love, or self-importance emerges when we rely on social media sites primarily to promote ourselves or draw attention to ourselves. When you are online for the wrong means, you have this ego, you have this high shoulders, oh yes, I got this likes, yes, this is who I am, blah, blah, blah. But if your post has a description of the gospel, you, you know, okay. <laughs> um, this being obsessed with likes, comments, validation from others, it's not right. We should not have excessive love for ourselves. Everything should be God, there should be God factor in everything. So yeah, the social media is a great tool for both self-development and propagation of the gospel of Christ. However, care must be taken to avoid addiction. In conclusion, be disciplined in the use of social media. It is also wise to have accountability partners. Encourage your spouse, family members, and Christian brothers and sisters to view your social networking activity and hold you accountable. This I'm going to elaborate on. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. If I see you on social media doing something that's not right, I should be able to call you aside and tell you, this is not propagating gospel. 
you shouldn't be doing this as Christians. That is holding each other accountable. And we should, we should start doing that as Christians. If you see something that is not God-like, you don't need to hold microphone and announce it to the whole world, Sha. Just call them aside. Maybe it might not even, it might have been done out of ignorance, but if you do that, then you'll be helping them and you'll be enriching the church. So yeah, we're done for today. Thank God for a successful um, Sunday school. Is there any question, contribution? Oh yeah. I have four minutes left. I have a question. Okay, okay. sorry, thank you. So like, I wanted to ask, um, what's the difference between, I was talking about Colossians the other time, so it got caught my attention. What's the difference between, because the first question you asked when you started was, is social media right for believers? Mm -hmm. So my question is, what's the difference between, uh, I feel there's so much restrictions placed on believers, and one of the things I believe I could be wrong is that these restrictions, I don't know why, but I feel personally and that these restrictions are not meant to be because these things are not what we are not trying to qualify ourselves before God. We are already qualified. We are living as qualified people. Paul in Colossians said that, um, so, okay, he said, so then if with Christ you put, oh, blah, 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 sorry, let me read my uh, NIV. So it was saying that these laws, these are not the things that qualify us. Because I feel a lot of people ask questions like, can a believer do this? Is he a believer? I think these things, sorry. Uh, sorry, please. Yeah, he said, since you died with Christ to the elemental spiritual forces of this world, why, as though, why as though you still belong to the world, do you submit to its rules? Do not undo, do not taste, do not touch. These rules which have to do with things that are all destined, destined to perish with use are based on merely human commands and teachings. So I feel the restrictions we place on believers, I know, okay, there are some certain elemental things we are not supposed to do as believers, but the restric most of the restrictions I hear people place on believers are, to me, they are just human traditions, like Jesus said. So what is the thin line between what we are supposed to do as believers? Because... It's, I don't know, it hurts me when I hear those things. And I don't have a problem with them, but because I know that there, I'm a young boy, there's a lot of million things I don't understand. But scripturally, these things are traditions of men. Why are we believers forcing and imposing ourselves and doing a lot of things? We are not trying to please God. Isaiah said that our righteousness are as filthy rags. So what we are doing, we are not trying to be righteous. God imposed a righteousness on us. Paul recommends that we are not, just like, uh, what's the example? A goat, we do meh, meh. A goat is not doing meh, meh, so that he's trying to be a goat. He's a goat, that's why he does meh, meh. We are not trying to live good so that we are righteous. We are righteous like we are living what we are ready. We are living out ourselves. Mm -hmm. Nobody else can behave like Iriolua because I am Iriolua. I'm not doing like this because I'm trying to be Ire. I'm Ire because I'm, try I'm already, I'm doing like this because I am Ire. It's my character. So why is there so much restrictions on believers? Oh, is a believer supposed to do this? Is a believer supposed to eat this? Paul said that these things are traditions of men. Why? Sorry. Um. Sorry, I was emotional. So before, first of all, I'm sorry, but before I give to him, I don't know if I'm correct or not, but why should Christians not lie, tell lies, and the rest? I feel like we have, there should be differentiation. Even, yes, it's thing, we're using it as like things of the world because that's, we are in the world, but we're not of the world, right? So these things should, we can't say, oh, we shouldn't put, I would not say restriction. It's just there has to be a differentiation. We can't say, oh, the restrictions. Exactly. I think, yeah. In terms of when you, in terms of, you know, like lies, sexual even Paul condemned those things. Because normally, even a Buddha is, is not, cannot do those things. How come we believers should be doing those things? But in terms of, uh, let's say, in terms of, Politics, something like, exactly, you read my mind. Politics, like social media that we spoke about today. How come? Why those things are not what qualify us, our faith. 
He said, without faith, it is impossible to please God. How come we do these things? Like, one, I was speaking with one brother in my house yesterday, and he said something that struck me. He said, so I asked him that, okay, if we have 4,000 gods in the world, because me, I'm confident in Jesus and the God I serve. And I said that, how come, like, I, because I, when it is talk, I told him that they point finger to the God of the Bible. They don't point to the God of the Indians. Their finger is, okay, that God of the Bible doesn't exist. So I'm saying something is fishy. That means if they are pointing only finger to the God of the Bible, that means the God of the Bible is their problem. And because it's too real for them, and they hate him. But I was not saying that, you know, and after that, so what's the difference between our God and other God? He said, our God, because Christianity, we are the only ones that we don't need to do anything to get saved. We Salvation was imposed on us. Some other religions, they have to do put dot on their head to approach their gods. But we, our faith is what qualifies us. So, I'm lost in thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I know we don't have time again. Our, our Bible study topic today, social media platforms, our attention is drawn to what we can do with it. Hallelujah. I don't know about um, <clears throat> uh, what we know is that Christianity today is evolving. So many things are coming into each other. And um, that makes it difficult for people like to express our opinion. I don't know what is happening. Makes it difficult for people like us to express our opinion. I took a personal decision not to share things about myself, things I believe, the way it is. These days I will tend to look at what the Bible says about that without using myself as an example before, because people read a lot of meaning into that. Amen. What we are looking at today is social media platform. And I will tell you my opinion. Somebody talked about dating app. The expression leads a lot of people to join dating apps. Then ask yourself, should a believer be desperate? If we say you should not be desperate, I don't think nobody is trying to put a restriction on you. Amen? But for, we need to derive the benefits of this lesson. The one area I want to talk about is a lot of good social media platforms out there. The, you have YouTube. You have what I want to talk about. The one I want to talk about is um, LinkedIn. Amen. Because a good number of us here are still searching for jobs. And we don't utilize that platform very well. Apart from using it to preach the word of God, I have gone through so, some of the profile of a lot of people here. You will see grammatical errors in their LinkedIn profile, one. Secondly, you will see the wrong type of photographs used in this in professional website where they are looking for jobs. We should make the most of the social media platform out there. Let it benefit us. If you want to use LinkedIn, there are courses online that you can go and use on the best way to do that. You don't put on crazy, I will use the word crazy, crazy photographs on, on, on a platform like LinkedIn because the person that wants to employ you will look at your picture first and that person will not give you a second opportunity to make, create another impression. You have created an impression about yourself. Praise the Lord. It is not just about using social media platform to, to propagate the gospel. What about you? As someone who is here, LinkedIn has helped a lot of people to get jobs. Now you are there, you want to use it. Why not utilize most of that social media platform? There are a lot of them, Facebook, there are a lot of things you can do with them. But the problem is that a lot of us, we are in so many of them and we are not making impact. We just get ourselves busy, clog our heads, occupy our heads with frivolities, things that cannot just add value to our life. Bring up some of these topics, questions here and there distract us from the call we want us to derive from that um, 
from uh, from the lesson. And that explains why I just pity the person that took the teaching class here. I, I hope I'm not the one. Because if you're a teacher and you have thought about something, people still are confused. People who start you for 30 minutes. I just pity the teacher because from all our responses this morning, it showed that we didn't just grab anything when we took that lesson. And that's no surprising because some people will just sit down, just say what they want to say. What they want to do is in their mind. Thank you. Thank you all for your, thank you all for your contributions and questions. Shall we pray? In Jesus' name. Almighty Father, I want to say thank you again. Thank you, Lord, for the gathering of your brethren today. But I will ask, Lord, that we, as we've heard your word today, may we not just be the hearers, but the doers of your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Give us the grace, Lord, to use this medium as a great tool for you and as to make the good, to take the good out of it in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for answers prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray.